All right, so after t time steps, we're just going to add them up, right? So these, again, this is plus or minus one, just adding them up. And um, we'll call that x, right? That's our position, x, for our texter. And uh, we can take the average of that. We want to know on average where they are. And we, it's the average of the sum. This is just a sum. They're random, independent, random variables. So we don't have to worry about You can have them connected a little bit. You can do all those sorts of things. But they're going to be independent. So it's just the sum of their averages. And their average displacement of each of these things is just 0, right? Half a chance it goes this way. Half a chance it goes this way. On average, weirdly, they go nowhere. Is that okay? Yeah, no way, right? Uh, they have a characteristic width, though. There's a standard deviation. So we'll get to that. So in ESA, we expect our uh, texter, we'll call it a texter, to be back um, where they started. Okay, yeah. So this, uh, this is obviously can't be true for um, an odd number of steps because you must be, right? You have to have an even number of steps. There's a little detail there that we'll have to worry about with our calculations. So, but we're not going to worry about that too much. Um, so that as time, time goes on, the chance of our friend coming home must sort of go down, you'd think. Right. And what happens in two dimensions, right? So we can set off one in two dimensions where they're on a grid. So here's home, and they start off on a Manhattan grid and wander around. And they've got a quarter of a chance of going every way. And then we can do it in three dimensions. And so there's a famous problem in math that was studied by Polya. Uh, and you talk about the escape probability. What's the probability that you will you know, never come back? So I'll say now in, in one dimension, it's one. You will always come back. But higher dimensions, and there's a question of whether it's two, three, four, we'll get to that. Uh, there's a chance you will never see them again. Another little piece just to add in here, just to, something about dimensions, is that we tend to think, you know, higher dimensions are going to be harder and more weird and more complicated. But actually, for many, many physical systems, the, the jump from, so one dimension is easy. You can solve a lot of things in one dimension, but it's boring. Two dimensions is really hard. Maybe solving it takes a complete genius. Maybe it's impossible, you know, uh, but you can simulate and so on. And three dimensions is ridiculously hard. And then you can often get to four or five higher dimensions where it's basically like randomness. And so we were talking about an upper critical dimension. And the really high dimensional systems are actually easy to solve. So we unfortunately live in kind of a difficult one, three. Three is really hard. So I think that's a good thing to just have a feel for. Uh, and when it comes to networks, another dimension piece is that networks are like broken spaces. So the number of friends that you might have in a network, that's like your local degree. That's your, we call it degree, that's your local dimension. So it's sort of a dimension that you have a space with as you move around on at different dimensions. You know, there's a network under here. This grid is a network, and each one of these has four friends. Each one has four friends. And when you move to a network, and that's resembling of, this, of the two-dimensional space that it lives in. But networks live in some weird higher, higher dimensional space, which moves around as you go around. All right, so variance, variance is sum. That was our nice feature, of one of the features of, that makes us like variances. So we're just going to sum them up. Uh, so we sum the, uh, so the variance of the sum of these displacements, and it's going to be the sum of the variances. And so the variance for each one is, right, so there's a half a chance that you get a, right, so, uh, so it's as we, as we have, right, so it's, it's x minus mu all squared. You could do it like this, right, which is the second moment minus, if you go through the calculations, minus the first moment squared, which is mu squared in this, what I've written here. All right, mu squared. So this is 0 here, right? This is the thing we just showed. So the variance in this case is the second moment. Uh, so that's easy to calculate um, because we've got a half times 1 squared plus a half times minus 1 squared. So that's a half plus a half, so it's 1. So the variance is just the sum of 1 from i equals 1 to t, summing this constant up. So it's 1 plus 1 plus 1, and that's just t. So the standard deviation then, which is the square root of the variance, is t to the half. So this is a really fundamental thing to get out. right? So we talked about, I said we're going to get to this Gaussian distribution for, um, for um, 
you know, where our random walks end up after n time steps. And the typical width of this thing, we'll talk about the typical width of that uh, Gaussian is going to be t to the half, right? So we've got t time steps this way, and we'll have a Gaussian. And these Gaussians are growing, they're spreading out, they're spreading out, but it's growing slowly, right? The width of it is growing relatively slowly, like a t to the half, much slower than the number of time steps. So that's a non-trivial scaling law straight away, and that, uh, you know, that factors in all sorts of things. The Brownian motion story from um, Einstein, which was the, the uh, which I talked about, I think, in the first lecture when we talked about the manifesto for why we're doing this. Um, you know, that was the, one of the, that was a key piece in figuring out the Brownian motion was a uh, result of atoms existing. This, that, that little scaling exponent, big deal. All right, so. These are basic things. 